Welcome to part two in our RV maintenance series and today we are going to cover how to properly maintain your refrigerator. We're also going to cover some controversial slash hot topics in regards to your refrigerator and whether or not you should be driving down the road on propane. <gasps> is going to be laid out basically the same way as our last maintenance video for the AC. We're going to bring in an expert and have him show us how to properly do the maintenance on the refrigerator and then we're going to do it ourselves. If you missed our AC maintenance video then you missed our introduction of Todd and his wife Stephanie and they are two beards and a babe. Yeah we're missing a beard and a babe. We are. We today. just have a beard. Yes. <laughs> the babe is under the weather unfortunately but I think we're still in good hands with Todd. Todd is RVIA certified technician, and so he's gonna walk us through what we need to do to keep our refrigeration running at its optimum capability. Yeah, we're talking about an RV fridge, which means it can be on electric, 120 volts, or propane, which is a combination of DC and propane. There are a couple of hot topics when it comes to refrigeration, and one of them is do you run your refrigeration on propane while you're driving? That's a big one. It comes down, I think, to personal preference and your level of risk you want to take, really. Yeah. One of the factors is, do you have propane lines that run over your wheels? I think if you do, definitely don't run it on propane, because that's, if, correct me if I'm wrong, Todd, but that obviously is a big thing that can happen, is your tires blow out and then rip your propane lines and then... Then boom. Correct. Yeah. We can't run propane through the house or through the RV itself because of possible leaks. So we run it under the unit in mm -hmm. most cases. So on a travel trailer, we don't have any storage space. So they run it right down the sea channel next to, of course, the wheel well. And those are usually made out of rubber. And so, yeah, you know, a catastrophic blowout can rip that open. And if you have an open line or a charged propane line, you're one step closer to lighting that thing up. If you have a fifth wheel or if you have a motorhome, it's a matter of preference when it comes to the propane. We've, we've got a, a layer of uh, security there. Usually, you know, that's going to be the storage bay area. So you've right. got that mm -hmm. two, foot, two foot of space there. So you got you got some, uh, some space there. Yeah, I know that a lot of refrigerators are in slides also, and a lot of times your propane line comes out on the arm. For the slide and if that arm is over a tire obviously much higher risk mm -hmm. you on a fifth wheel or a travel trailer the bottom line is it adds risk when yeah. you run with your propane on plain and simple shut your propane off you don't have that risk at all we ran for about a year with our propane on yeah we're admitting it yeah we don't have any lines over our wheels uh so you know we were willing to accept that risk and but now that we have an inverter we run our refrigerator off of 120. we shut our propane off and we run it off our batteries right so basic summary of the propane issue is if you want zero risk then turn your propane off yeah you know turn your propane off your propane risk goes down your food safety risk goes up it's just a matter i think of trying things out and seeing what works for you yeah a big key to that is something like this, which we're gonna get into later. So before we jump into the actual maintenance stuff, we're gonna cover a few FAQs that we get regarding refrigeration, and we seem to get these questions quite often, so we figured we would just touch base on some of this stuff right now. Mm -hmm. The biggest question is, what is an RV fridge? Versus a residential fridge. Right, obviously a residential fridge is just like it sounds, it's a residential fridge, and you put one of those in an RV, it's no different. So what makes an RV fridge an RV fridge is the fact that you can run it on propane along with 12 volts DC. You got to have both of those. Which to... an RV having an RV fridge makes boondocking easier for right, some. Right, which is why they're in RVs to begin with. Mm -hmm. RV fridges operate off of heat. That source of heat can be propane along with some DC power to help regulate that, or 120 volts AC. So you have a little more flexibility with an RV fridge. When you're boondocking, you can put it on propane and use very little electricity. Mm -hmm. So when you're running the fridge on propane, you're 
going to use about an amp or less of DC power. When you're running the fridge on AC on 120 volts, if you're hooked up to shore power, it just doesn't matter. But if you're boondocking or you want to travel and run your refrigerator off of an inverter like we're going to talk about, it, this thing uses about 500 watts, which when you convert it over, is going to be about 40 amps DC. So it, it's a bit of a power hog compared to some other systems. Mm -hmm. Also, RV fridges need to be level. The way that the chemical reaction works in there, if the RV is not level, the coils go back and forth like this. And if it's tilted a little bit this way, so leveling this way is a little more important than this way, you can get some crystallization that can accumulate and then cause blockage and over time decrease the efficiency of your refrigerator. So we're going to show you what we're talking about, about where the crystals can be formed and all that stuff once we get into the guts of this thing. Yep. Also, when you're driving down the road, if you do run your, with your refrigerator on either via an inverter and AC power or via propane and DC power, it's a little bit less susceptible to that because it's moving around and the crystals aren't going to have time to kind of settle into an off location. Mm -hmm. But you definitely want to be level when you're set up and running. If you're going to park in a uh, Walmart parking lot overnight, you may want to shut your refrigerator off and keep it closed so it's not running and it's off level. Or do like we do and just level manually. Mm -hmm. Let's see what Todd has to say. We definitely want to make sure that we leave space in the back. We need <laughs> airflow to come through here. You know, when we cram this totally full of food, you know, we're not allowing the air to flow through here. Now, some of the uh, refrigerators, even RV style, will come equipped uh, with a fan that goes on the inside, a little 12-volt fan, and some do not. I would suggest if you can find a small battery-operated fan, you want to put it back here where we have, of course, our fins. We want to dry these off. Secondly, we also want to look at our fans here. These are our condenser fans here for the refrigerator. The water is going to accumulate. It's going to, it's going to pull all the moisture out of this box. It's going to accumulate here and it's going to drip down into your drip pan. So we just want to make sure that we look at these and make sure there's no obstructions. Do you keep that inside the refrigerator all the time or just do you do this occasionally? Yeah, so if you're noticing on an especially hot day or if you're traveling, you know, you want to go ahead and turn that on. Mine comes equipped with fans, so I don't have to use this. Okay. It does have a fan right up here, but we want the fan you know, somewhere down here blowing across this. Okay. All right. That looks like the exact model we have. Do we have fans? I don't know. We'll go look. Hold on. Let me go look. <laughs> is that the little fan right there? Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we got that. We have that. Okay. Okay. Sorry. For every minute that this is open, it'll take an hour for the refrigerator to catch back up. I have noticed that when I load groceries in there. Oh, yeah. Another thing we need to pay attention to as consumers is the seals. And so there's a test that we want to perform whenever we're looking at the seals to make sure we got a proper seal. Grab you a dollar bill. And I don't have one on me. I don't, I don't carry dollars, but I'm going to grab a piece of paper. I'm going to slide the paper in, and I'm going to close it. What we want to do is there's going to be a little bit of tension, but we just want to make sure that as we pull down, that the tension doesn't change. Uh, okay. It doesn't want to be an easy slide. Right. And if we find a spot that is actually easier to pull through, then we know that there may be a problem. There's a memory to them, but because we keep them closed and because they, they get cold, what happens is they'll, they'll lose their memory. Right. You know? Of course, I run my finger over it, you see tons of dirt on it. And that dirt right there can actually get stopped up. I also notice actually just a little bit of glue sitting right here. And just that will allow air to get in there. So we just want to make sure that we get this clean properly. And if we slide that piece of paper through, if it loses its tension and it goes through, we can take a blow dryer put it on low heat, and all we have to do is just run a blow dryer over this for a couple minutes, all the way back up. Huh. And that heat will allow it to find its memory again and open back up. Oh, wow. Cool. I imagine also where the seal connects to the fridge, you want to make sure that's clear and clean and doesn't have right. any. Make sure that this, you know, all of this is clean. Make sure this is clean as well. Do you have any particular cleaning product or just regular soap and water? What do you use? Water. Now, because this is rubber, we just don't want to use any petroleum. Right. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, some Windex. Okay. Now, a big thing about these refrigerators is they have to be level. They could be installed improperly. Okay, so even though your rig is level, mm. your, uh, your refrigerator may not. 
So the best place to use this, uh, of course, is in the bottom of your freezer. Which we're apparently not, because the door keeps closing. Yeah. <laughs> also, one thing we didn't do very well our first year, but we've done okay since, is keeping it defrosted. These aren't like residential fridges and they need to be defrosted. And we have a separate video on that, which we'll link up here. In the refrigerator, we have this uh, drip paint. It's, it's gonna pull that moisture out and it's gonna let it drip out the back. We don't have one for the freezer because of course it just freezes. So that's why you don't have a lot of frost in here, but you will in here. Before we start doing the actual hands-on maintenance stuff, we wanted to talk temperature. Right, how do you know if your refrigerator is performing optimally or not if you don't know what the temperature is. So you gotta have information. <clears throat> We've been using this for quite a while now. This has two sensors, one for the refrigerator and one for the freezer so you can see at any given time what your temperatures are. This one also will show you what the high temperature and low temperature are. It'll, you can push these and see, oh, did my refrigerator get too hot while we were traveling? Mm -hmm. Uh, because that's important. We see so many people online say, oh, well, I kept it closed for... My food feels cold. <clears throat> everything feels fine. Yeah. Guess what? Your hands aren't very good Yeah, and you've got chicken sensors. in there or meat yeah. and stuff like that in there, and that's... <clears throat> yeah. Food safety is important. 40 degrees to 140 degrees is what the USDA calls the danger zone. Mm -hmm. uh, anything in that range can grow bacteria in some areas very quickly. From our experience, the temperature really fluctuates kind of quickly mm -hmm. in these things. And it can fluctuate significantly just by having these open for a short amount of time. The USDA says that the, the fridge should be at 40 or below, generally between like 33 and 40, and the freezer should be at zero. Mm -hmm. um, we've never been able to get that kind of, those kind of temperatures. And the thing is, these temperatures are tied together. There's no way to regulate one versus the other. We have one control here, or that goes from one to nine, and that's all we have. Mm -hmm. Right now we're 34 or 15, which is still good. Our food is still frozen. Our ice cream's not gonna be really super hard. I don't really like super hard ice cream, yeah. anyway. so it kinda works <laughs> out. If you're a weekend camper, and you wanna load it up with just stuff for the weekend, maybe freeze it the night before, or start your refrigerator up the night before and get everything cold first, have some way to know your actual food temperature. That way you're not gonna get sick in the middle of your camping trip. Right. So let's jump into the maintenance and let's just go through some of the stuff we learned from Todd. Right, so uh, let's do the build test first. Build test. Some of the stuff we've never done. So it's yeah. gonna be exciting for us. I know, I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. curious about this. So there you go, the $20 bill. You know, we have some hundreds laying around, but we didn't wanna, you know, be that guy. He's being that guy <laughs> right now. <laughs> You could, should really do this, I guess, on all the schools. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it feels good. Okay. Now this one will be a little harder to check. So the dollar bills check is good for us. I mean, we're not finding anything obvious. What about the freezers? <laughs> <laughs> that's true, we could do those. Good? Yeah, it's just sort of a feel thing. It's not grabbing or sticking and it's not like just zipping through with no resistance. It's kind of mm -hmm. even. So the dollar bill check, it's good I think to check if you're having a problem and you want to check your seals. We're not having a problem so we're not going to go check all the way around every seal. I think probably even before you do that, just a visual inspection of the seals. We've never wiped these seals down so that is something that we will do today. We're getting some dirt and stuff off there. Yeah. Just from that little time that we had the doors open, look how high this jumped. It's at 39 now and the freezer's at 23. The temperature just it can change quickly with having the doors open for a short amount of time. So be careful with that. Now we're going to go ahead and do the hair dryer mm -hmm. on the seals. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Okay. a little hot in my finger. This is the, the heat glove. That's a heat glove that came with my hair iron thing. So what I'm doing here is just to kind of let the heat get into the seal a little bit. I'm just kind of pulling it back while I do this.
ours has been pretty good and our seal is pretty good but if you have one where the dollar bill test just zips right through or sticks mm -hmm. and you require some extra maintenance you might want to empty the fridge into a cooler so you have plenty of time to really let the hair dryer sit on there and expand yeah. it out so yeah. just don't leave it on there too long don't you know use your use your head yeah don't leave it on there till it melts right that, that would not be smart that would not be one common problem we see with these particular Norcold fridges is the top part you've got a divider here and it's two separate doors but on the bottom you've got two separate doors and you notice there's no divider here this little thing here flaps out and it has a channel right here that causes it to flip out and what happens on some is their flap stays back like that mm -hmm. and then when this closes you've got a big old gap running right down the middle of your yeah. fridge so you want to make sure that when you close this even just casually that this comes all the way forward we have had it start to stick a little bit though and that's just a matter of lubrication you also want to make sure these channels right here is clear and that it, you know there's nothing blocking it from coming up the other thing you'll want to check are these latches it's just a little plastic latch yeah ours started to stick a little bit in the, in the down position all right so let's jump on to the inside of the refrigerator okay. and then we'll go to the freezer you can see that from having our refrigerator open, we're getting quite a bit of moisture in there and that moisture is accumulating on our fins and dropping into our drip pan as designed. This tube is pretty snug yeah. and getting it attached to the back of this drip pan can be a bit of a pain, but you wanna make sure that's on there, otherwise it's just dripping down to the bottom of your fridge. So we're good to go there. If you're curious, this is what the inside sensor looks like for that wireless controller. It just uses AAA batteries. I can see that our fan is working. You feel the air coming out of the back back here, and the fan basically blowing air across those fins. So we're gonna do a level check. I am going to use the level app on the iPhone. I'm putting it on surface level. If you have a phone like the iPhone or most phones these days that have a camera sticking out the back, you're gonna to wanna to put it into a case that kind of levels the back out. Otherwise the camera makes it pop up on a corner. Hope it's level, because we've been doing this for two years. We've never checked it. So level. Bingo. Smack dab in the middle. We're just going to take it back over to Todd and he's going to walk us through the steps on what we need to do on the outside of the refrigerator. Before we jump into maintenance, and this is partially just for my edification, if you could just describe what the hell's going on back there <laughs> and how all that works. Okay, well, there is no refrigerant in the system. We're actually just introducing heat. And so we'll either use it by propane or by these heating elements. Now there's a couple chemicals that we add in here to create the freezing. We're taking water and ammonia in a liquid form and we're heating it up. We let it boil and it comes up here. This is our first heat exchange. We want that ammonia to turn back to a liquid. We introduce it across these fans and we have to have air come up through here. And as the ammonia liquefies, we then introduce the hydrogen. And those two together flash freezes. And so it usually happens right here at the top where the freezer is. And as it works itself down, it gets a little bit warmer. Here's those lines that we're talking oh, about. I love, I love the props. Yes. Props but, for the props. Right. So <laughs> this is the introduction of the uh, ammonia and the hydrogen. It flash freezes from the beginning, but as time goes on, it gets a little bit warmer. And it works out perfectly that down here we get about 39, 40 degrees, maybe 32. But up here, it's roughly about 10 degrees. And that's why you don't see any RV refrigerators with a freezer on the bottom. Right. On the back of the Norcold, you're going to have a little drip pan that you catch right here. But here's the main thing. This little cap, the last water uh, drop will stay right there and won't allow air in. Yeah. So if you're noticing that you've got a lot of frost going on in your refrigerator, it could be that this cap has come off. We're pulling that moisture out and we have to let it escape. Right. We have to way that the air doesn't go back in. Very gotcha. cool. Yeah, that's so, very interesting. And we want to take the warm air that's inside the refrigerator and freezer and pull it out. That's what these are out here. These are the heat exchange. Now, here's the thing that I also saw with, you know, several of the North Poles is, is, you know, the refrigerator works fine in the morning, but as the day gets going, the refrigerator is not working near as properly. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That all has to do with airflow. We, we want this hot air to escape. 
uh, that we can keep that air moving and we can actually cool up our refrigerators a whole lot more efficiently. Awesome. This, this is sounding strikingly familiar to our AC maintenance video. Yeah. Right. Airflow, airflow, yeah. airflow. Yeah. So there's a little bit of maintenance and it doesn't look like it needs much. So you'd be surprised at just how much a little bit of dust acts as an insulator. We want to keep these clean. But the main thing is, of course, we're going to have our side vents. We have a lower side vent and we have an upper side vent. We just use physics. We allow cold air to come in from the bottom, come across uh, our, our, our coils here, but mainly across our fins up here, and then just escape out our upper side vent. Our units, yours and mine, you know, we have our refrigerator in a slide out. If it's not in the slide out, it's just simple. You don't have a side vent, you have a roof vent. Mm -hmm. You want to take this off and you want to, you want to make sure that this refrigerator is enclosed no wider than the, the, the refrigerator itself. If there's an open spot right up here, all the hot air just simply sits right here. It doesn't right. escape. And if we don't let the hot air escape, then cold air can't come through here. When you take off your upper side vent, the top of this should be right at the bottom of your upper side vent. We want that cold air to come all the way through and then escape out. Right. If we have a cabin, a space in here, that heat's going to stay there. So how do we take care of this? You can get some cardboard, or if you have some leftover reflectix, we can use some of that same tape that we did when we uh, mm. fixed our air conditioning ducts, put that across there, and then the top side will go just to the upper side of the side vent. So that way the air has no place to go. We'll get that and come right back out. Right. Okay. That's a finishing touch at the OEMs, and sometimes that gets missed. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> so it's a real simple maintenance. You know, whenever you open up your side vent, you're going to look down here, clean off the dust, blow off, of course, your uh, heat exchange here, and then up here on your fins. So just blow that off. And that's honestly all the maintenance you have to do. Uh, one last thing to check. If you're finding out that propane's not as cold, everything's working, but it's not cooling, it could be this flu tube is open. And this flu tube allows, you know, both from the propane and from your heating source for the air to come through. But if you notice that there's, you know, some insulation or something like that blocking that out see if you can get that out right turn the refrigerator and see if you can clean that out i've seen different videos here and there of people recommending taking the cover off outside to help cool it faster right. or something and i didn't know if that was really true or something that you should do or should not do right the less obstructions we have the better okay but with that you know you also have to be mindful of when you open this up, that you're allowing for obstructions to get in there. One of them is dirt daubers. They oh, yeah. If you're good about, you know, making sure that you clean it up, you know, put it back on, mm -hmm. absolutely. Okay. Now, one other thing that I've seen online is some people will actually buy a fan, a DC fan, and install it on the inside of that grate to pull air through there. I imagine that certainly can't hurt anything. But, that shouldn't be your first step. Right. So this is designed to work. And if you're immediately getting a fan for this, there's there's a couple steps you're missing. Okay. Right. The closer that our refrigerator coils are to the to the wall, the better. What we say is a half inch between these coils right here and this wall. And the best way to do that is stick your hand up there. Right. And it's put somewhere. You know, I have that finger, so it's supposed to work. <laughs> they stop. But if you have a lot, of, you know, a pretty big gap, you can get just a baffle, piece of uh, cardboard, something like that. Just lay it right up here and force that air to get closer to the coils. So that's pretty much it on servicing. There's not a whole lot to do. You just want to keep it clean. The air flows king. This stuff. is the first time that this has been done, right? Yeah, I mean, I have looked in the lower panel before just to see what's in there because I'm curious. curious. Yeah. yeah. And also we were just in there to install a fire suppression system, which will be a video coming your way soon. Oh, yeah. Fire suppression, pretty cool. So you might see some of those parts in there. We're not gonna go over that right now. We're gonna start at the top and work our way down. That way as we clean stuff, if stuff falls, we don't clean the bottom twice. Makes sense. Uh, tools that we have for this, flathead screwdriver, but you could just as easily use a quarter for these panels, they're real mm -hmm. simple. A ladder, we're gonna show you what kind of ladder we use for this and a shop vac and our air compressor and so we're going to see if the air compressor or this works better we're going to try this first because this is going to be the most easy to obtain for everybody mm -hmm. uh, not everybody has an air compressor even though you should 
Also, our compressor is really designed to air up tires and not for constant air. Mm -hmm. uh, so it has a real quick burst of air, which is much stronger than this, but we have to do it in bursts. Okay. We also use the same ladder inside when we have his daughter staying with us and they're up on the queen size bunk. This ladder is a little bit easier to get up and down. You're looking for gaps and stuff, right? Yeah. A couple of things to note up here on ours. This board is here on purpose, designed to make the airflow come up and through the vents, uh, which I've seen online. People go, oh, what's that? That's stupid. And they cut it, thinking that it frees up airflow here. But the whole idea is you want the airflow to be going up and out. I can see that we don't have much room on the sides over here, which is good. We don't want a lot of room. So I don't know if you can see it, but back, I don't want to get in there because it's hot, but back around that corner is more insulation. So we've got insulation all up and down the sides. We have no room for air to get around the sides. And we've got the same thing over here. It's hard to see around that corner, but there is insulation back there. They've got a complete baffle here. This baffle or blockage or whatever you might want to call it goes all the way across here. So like Todd mentioned, that's a big thing when they're finishing these off. If they didn't put this in here, there would be a big gap above the fridge and that would be bad. So the OEMs for the green design did a good job. They did a good job. I am just going to kind of blow these fins off here to get a little bit of dust off of them. I don't see anything down in here. He said this stuff is pretty weak, so we're gonna give the air compressor a shot. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I got this attachment for our Viair. We'll have a link to our Viair in the description. You gotta have one of those for your tires and it works for stuff like this also. Does that work better? It's all looks really good up here. I mean, there was a tiny bit of dust, but not much to even really blow off. Wasn't that bad? Yeah. Especially considering some of the places we've camped in Boondock. Yeah. So very little dust on the fins. None of the fins were bent. Sealed on the sides, sealed on the top, sealed up through about halfway across the fins. So that airflow has to go past them. Let's check out down below. Okay. Ooh, it's dirty in there, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. Ooh, this clearly needs cleaned out. I think we're gonna need the shop back here. It looks to me like we've got a little more than we need. Space here, space you Space in there, yeah. Well, you know what, now that the Protang's in there, we really don't because it kind of, it's blocking that air. The Protang is the fire suspension yeah. that he's talking about. We've got probably maybe an inch and a quarter between the coils on the fridge and the back wall. I think if it were a little bit tighter, it would be good if we didn't have our fire suppression system installed, I would do that. Uh, you can see these red caps here and here. That is a fire suppression tube that wraps up and around in there. And that's kind of blocking airflow too, which is good, making it go through. I just want to clean it up down here. Other than that, there's just not a whole lot for us to do in here. Oh, the hose and drip pan. Our pan currently has about a quarter inch of water in it. I think it's because we were just in the refrigerator, letting a bunch of moisture in. It's a cue, remember how we showed you it accumulating on those fins and dripping out and going out here, so. But that's actually a good test. We did the inside first, it got moisture in and it's getting the moisture out. We can see it, it's right here. We also have our cap still on our line here, which is what we want. Don't pull that off, it's designed to hold that last drop. So what about the sides, everything okay? Um, yeah, yeah, the sides are insulated. You can see over here, it's a little more obvious. And on this side, it's back in there. Got insulation up and down there. Still needs a rag to wipe the remaining dirt off. We didn't have a lot of work to do on ours out here. No, luckily, luckily. <laughs> yeah, luckily uh, Grin Design did a good job after they put the fridge in of putting all the baffles in the right place and making sure airflow was right. Yeah, so um, far they're two for two as far as their installation of the AC unit and of the refrigerator mm -hmm. for our unit. So yeah. it's been good. Now, if you've got a Grin Design and it's not the case for you, be sure to call them. Yeah. They do want to hear about this stuff mm -hmm. and let them know. Take some pictures and send them in. Emily so far, loves that stuff. Oh, Emily. Emily's going to love us. <laughs> 
So, oh, and one more thing before, while we're talking about the refrigerator and gas and stuff, I wanna show you one more thing. This thing here is called a gas stop. We ran into these people at the Tampa RV show and it's a really great, inexpensive and simple safety device. It will act a little bit as a meter, but its primary purpose is if you have a catastrophic pressure failure, if your line is cut or broken, this thing shuts it off completely. So it's just one more thing that you hope you never need. We do have a link in the description below for the gas stop and it includes a discount, I believe. Don't forget to check out our friends, Todd and Stephanie and their channel, Two Beards and a Babe, mm -hmm. where they have a lot of interesting, fun stuff there too. Yeah, we'll link that up here. Yep. And also Road Life Project. Yes. Road Life Project is going strong and growing strong. And it uh, seems like it's a really good resource. That was, that was pretty I just, good. I just made that up. I know. <laughs> I know. It is a really good resource for full-time road warriors like us. Uh, as well as families with kids and a lot of good resources. So check that out. Yep. We'll put that link in the description below. All also. the links are going to be in the description below. Don't forget to click the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. Mm -hmm. Here come the outtakes. Okay, here we go. Take three. Yeah. <laughs> Take four. What's going on? Hey, you came down. Talking to the people. What, you, what, kind of secret, <laughs> what kind of secrets are you telling them about me? Chatted with Todd about this, and here's that. That was awesome. That was, sorry, that was so shitty. Fridge FAQs, take one out of probably 20. <laughs> the temperature and how, how, Ooh, actually, yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. You need some water. <laughs> yeah. All this talking. Hey, let me get it. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Give him the gun frame. <laughs> I saw this freaking glove well, on like a freaking Michael the, Jackson. Because you're going to do the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> Are you good to go, Todd? I am. All right. Beard's looking on point. You're good. Yeah. Hair's, <laughs> hair's looking good. <laughs> feels good? Oh, feels so good. <laughs> Hi. See you. Peace out. Yo. It's Emily's going to love us. It's in the can. We love you, Emily. We love you, Emily. <laughs>